Hey, what's up? Welcome back. So a couple weeks ago at RubyConf, I met Colin right here, Colin Gilbert, and uh, he taught me about this new method that's available on the enumerable module called partition. And what it does is you can call this on some collection and pass it a block and that'll return two separate arrays um, where the elements in one array will be when the block evaluates to true and the other array when the block evaluates to false. There's another similar method here called group by, but I wanted to dig in today into this partition method. But I want to just dig into and play around with this partition method. It's kind of fun, and if you've never worked with it before, um, there's a couple of, like cool things you can do with it. So suppose we have some input that has this array with um, maybe like six elements or something, and you want to just split it up so that you have all of the even elements and all the odd elements. So we might say like even and odd is equal to input.partition, and we want to pass it a block where it'll evaluate for each element in the block. And we can say like, if the element is even, then we want that to be in our first array. And if it's otherwise, we're gonna put it in the second array. So if we just like print out like even here is even, and odd is odd, then we'll see what we're talking about. So if we run this Ruby partition, then we get out the even elements from the left side and the odd elements on the right side. So that's one way to sort of like separate out the two. We could change our block here so that it we're separating them out in a different way. So instead what we could do is say, um, maybe we want the elements that are less than three to be on the left side and the elements that are greater than or equal to three to be on the right side. And so then what we get is this one, two on the left and one, two, three, four, five, six on the right. <clears throat> kind of cool. There are other uses for this, but one thing I wanted to talk about is this destructured assignment thing that's going on on the, on the left-hand side. So we're technically like creating this two variable, two variables on the left, right? Even and odd. So if we didn't, if we didn't do that, if instead we said just like output or something, and then we uh, printed out out output, then we'll see that we actually get back an array that has two elements. So this array has two elements. One, two, those are the two elements in the array. All right, so first let's take a look at that destructured assignment thing and, and try to understand what's going on. So if we had maybe like two variables, A and B, and we were assigning into that, I don't know, like uh, X and Y, right? And then down here, we just wanted to print out like A is A and B is B. Then what might you expect to happen, right? Um, well, first of all, the first element in the array on the right-hand side is going to be assigned to the first variable that's on the left-hand side. The second element is going to be assigned to the second variable. So this is called like a destructured assignment, I think. Um, and so what we can do is we can run our partition method again, and now we can see that A is X and B is Y. But now, suppose for a second that we actually had a third element in our array. What do you think is going to happen? Right? Is where is Z going to go if we only have two variables on the left and three elements in the array on the right hand side? Where do you think Z might go? Well, it turns out that Z just gets dropped on the floor. It's not assigned to anything because there's no slot for it to go into. And so, right now, the way that we've written this, we are really just collecting up the first element and the second element. Now, Ruby has the splat operator, which allows us to sort of collect up more of those. So if instead of just doing B here, if we do star B or the asterisk before the B, <clears throat> asterisk is like hard word to say, <laughs> then the first element, this is also like a really common tool in like Lisp um, where you'll have like a head or tail. And so in this case, the head, meaning the first element, in the collection on the right hand side is the value x and then the tail meaning b that's going to be like an array of all of the rest of the elements so let's take a look at how this works so now b is actually going to be an array so here we see like a has the value x and b is actually y and z the array of y and z so that is the tail there's another way we can do this too is we can put a splat operator in the front and say like give me everything except the last element so this works also, so now B is going to be Z and A is X and Y. This is like really helpful for building recur some like recursive things. But um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that destructured assignment. 
I think you can, you can, yeah. So like you can even do like if we had X, Y, Z, A, B, C, you can even have like, okay, give me the last two elements and then put the rest in the front. So you can kind of, you can kind of put these on either end. Um, if we do C here, then yeah, now we can see that like B is B and C is C because, um, C is pointing at the last element in the array, B is pointing at the second to last element in the array, and A is grabbing everything from the front forward. Now, if again we switch this to be uh, having C contain the rest of the elements, then A will be X, B will be Y, and C is gonna be the array for the tail, so the rest of the collection. So if we run this again, we see X, Y, and then Z, A, B, C, right, as uh, the collection there. So that's kind of like how you can think about destructure assignment. This can also be useful as you're like iterating over lists of things. Uh, the arguments into the block kind of behave in a similar way. Um, so you can use that splat operator. That can be kind of handy. All right, back to partition, back to partition. So um, one, one cool thing that we can do with partition is suppose we have like some API results. So let's actually just like fetch some stuff from um, the uh, Star Wars API. So if we say require Faraday, um, what we can do is instead of that being our input, we can say that response is Faraday.get. Um, what is this? Swappy.dev slash API slash people. And this will give us back some data. So if we p response here, and run our code, we should be hitting the Star Wars API. Um, and this is kind of just like a playground test API. And we got back a bunch of data. Um, but I wanted to say like, number one, why I'm using Faraday. Uh, so there's this article here on scrapingb.com that goes through and evaluates several different Ruby clients that make basically HTTP clients. And uh, one that I've used for a really long time is called REST client. Uh, I've heard of HTTP party, not a, yeah, whatever. Like I haven't used this a ton. I haven't used HTTP.rb. Net HTTP is in the standard library. This is like a recommended thing if you're building a client library that's gonna interact with uh, HTTP. But in practice, Faraday tends to be a great option. It's not the fastest when you're making get requests. It does pretty good for post requests. There, I mean, the, the repo has lots of downloads and in, in millions and there's lots of stars. At the end of the day, it's all about your developer experience. It's like how happy you are when you're writing Ruby and net HTTP, pretty tricky to get right. And uh, yeah, not a huge fan of working with it, but if you are building a client library, you don't want it to depend on other things. And so, yeah, you can use that as part of the standard library. So that was a big takeaway from this. Um, Okay, so we've got our response back from the API, and this gives us a bunch of people that are available in the Star Wars API. So if we look closely in here, we see the name Luke Skywalker. So Luke Skywalker is someone that was returned. We also see some height and some mass. So suppose for a second that we wanted to build a spaceship, but we uh, <laughs> inside of the spaceship, there's only a door that allows people to enter the door who are a certain height or shorter. And so maybe what we can do is use the partition method on the results from this API call to separate out the characters who would fit through the door and the characters who would not fit through the door. So 172 centimeters, whatever. So like, I think what we can do is say like response.body, we wanna JSON parse this. Um, I think there's ways to configure Faraday so that it does this by default. Um, but let's just say that our data is the parsed JSON from that response body. And then we wanna say like, I don't know, results are data at results. And um, what we wanna do is we wanna partition those. So we wanna say like results.partition and we're getting back a character so we'll say this is a character, and if the character's height is um, less than 160 centimeters or something, that should include Luke Skywalker. So then we'll say like, uh, now we have like short uh, and tall is kind of the separation of the people where the cutoff between short and tall is 160 centimeters. And then we'll just print out short 
and print out. Actually, like I think we what we want to do is actually um, uh, iterate over short dot. Yeah, like we want to map this so that we see their name. So let's just see what this looks like. Also, height. I noticed. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see an issue here. So if we run this again. Okay, so we got an error. It says partition in partition RB on line eight in the less than operation, the comparison of string with 160 failed. So uh, this right here, height is returned from the API as a string. I don't know. I don't know why, but we can just like convert that into an integer and hope that no characters come back with non integer heights. But <laughs> okay, so we see R2D2, Leia, and R5D4 are all the right height. I don't know, let's see if we make it one, 180, 180 centimeters. We don't want just droids and Leia. Uh, run it again. Okay, so now we get Luke, Leia, Owen, a bunch of people. So this is these are the folks that are short enough to go, uh, who are <laughs> allowed to go on the trip. So we'll say like, um, like what is that, passengers? and everyone else will be left behind. Uh, and we can do the same thing. So tall.map, and we'll pull out the name, and let's just see what happens. All right, so the passengers that are coming aboard is Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, R2-D2, Leia, Owen, Beru, I guess Owen is Owen. Wait, is this his wife, daughter? I don't know. Who is Beru? I don't know that character. R five D four, and then who was left behind? Darth Vader. Thank God, right? <laughs> uh, Biggs, Dark Lighter, and Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, we can't leave Obi Wan. That's all right. Whatever. So this is one way that you might use partition uh, to like separate out results. So here we're like digging into the character object that came back and doing some analysis on that. And that gives us like short and tall. Cool. The next thing I wanted to talk about with partition that's super cool is this algorithm called quicksort. So quicksort is an algorithm that allows you to sort of uh, divide and conquer. Um, so suppose you had a bunch of elements and you wanted to sort them. Um, one way that you could do that is like, find a pivot point and anything that is less than that pivot point, you um, put it before and everything that's greater than the pivot point, you put it after. Uh, so this is sort of a visualization of how that happens. Um, but what I wanted to do is like, try to do a quick sort implementation where the partition is this partition method. And we randomly find an element and we use that as our pivot point and we move the, half the things to the left, half the things to the right, and then we can like recursively um, work our way down. So let's try to do that. I'm just gonna comment this stuff out. And then let's say, okay, so suppose we have some like input that is like, maybe they're ages, I don't know, 33. So now what we wanna do is make some method that like sorts these. So we could just call input.sort. Uh, that's super boring, right? Like this is what we're kind of going for is seeing 2, 7, 23, 32, 33, whatever. But um, what we want to do is make some method called quicksort. Or no, this is a, uh, is it quicksort? Random quicksort, whatever. We'll just make our own method called sort that takes input. And its job is going to be like, okay, we want to randomly pick some pivot point. Um, so we're going to say like the pivot is going to be input.sample. So input.sample is a way of saying like, or sample is like saying, give me a random number from here. So if we look at this, like uh, let's open up pry and we can say something like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dot sample. And that will just pull out a random number and give us back the random number happens to be seven, lucky number seven, several times. Uh, okay, so uh, if you were a gambler and this was your lucky number, that would be pretty crazy because you would have hit five out of, what is that, six? Five out of nine, five out of seven shots. Um, okay, cool. So this is a way that you can grab your random pivot. Uh, great, so we've got our pivot. This is gonna be the number where we want to partition around that pivot. So we're gonna say, we've, we've, we've picked some random number. Let's say the number is 23. What we're gonna do 
is say, and as we partition the results, we're gonna partition them such that the numbers in the, in the list that are less than 23 go on the left, and anything 23 or greater goes on the right, and then we will, um, we will recur on the, those results, okay? So what we wanna do is we're gonna say like left and right are equal to input.partition, and we're gonna pass in like whatever the numbers are, and then we are going to say like, if num is less than pivot, then include it in the left. Otherwise, uh, include it in the right, and then what we wanna do is we want to return um, the sorted left plus the sorted right. Okay, so this is gonna be our recursion. This is where we're like actually calling ourself again. But left here should definitely be a smaller amount than what the input was, and right should be a smaller amount than what the input was. And so we are going to get, uh, ultimately we're gonna like be passing in arrays that are smaller and smaller and smaller until we start getting return values where things are like sorted out. So at the base case here, so we need a base case so that we can, re we can actually return. So the base case is gonna be if the input is, if we get an input that is an empty list or a list with one element, then we wanna return. So we're gonna say return input if input.length is less than or equal to one. So this is, our, this is sort of our base case that we need to add. And then otherwise, I think we can say sort input and just see what happens. Uh, I guess we want some output, right? Uh, P sort input. And there we go. We got two, 23, 32, whatever. So like to see what's happening here, let's do puts uh, left is left and right is right. Just to see if we can like get a, break, a better breakdown. So in the beginning, right, we are partition. Oh, we, it's also, <clears throat> let's show our pivot too. So our, uh, I guess like in the middle, we'll just say like, uh, P for our pivot is pivot, and that should be random, right? Because we're using sample. Okay, so our pivot in this case was 98. So anything less than 98 ends up in the left, and anything 98 or greater ends up in the right. So here our pivot is 63. And so like this first call, in this first call, our right-hand side ended up being 98 and 101, but also, so in the second call, we were only considering this left-hand side because we recall that we like recurse and we call sort again first with the left, then we concatenate that with what's on the right. So when we see 63 here and we only on the right-hand side, we only see 65, 63, we don't see 98 and 101. That's because this result that we're printing out is only for the recursion on this left side. And so here's the numbers that are 63 or greater and everything less than 63 is in the left. Again, now this next call is again being, we're pivoting on uh, a number that was randomly sampled from the left. We get two and seven, two, two and seven. We call it again with, now we're calling it with the right hand side. So then like you kind of ultimately build up until you get back to um, the return values that you concatenate all together and then you spit them out. So that is, uh, I'm pretty sure, don't, <laughs> don't correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, yes, please do correct me. If you know better than I do, please leave a comment that says um, that this is uh, not, whatever, this is not quicksort. But the algorithm and the idea and the concept of like pivoting and splitting and re like working your way back is uh, definitely how I think about it. So that's like a cool use of pivot. Also, if you're curious about using Faraday, that thing that we used to make HTTP requests, you can go to their docs here and learn more about pulling out the status or the headers or the response body and things like that. Um, cool, yep, so that is the partition method, a couple different use cases. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Colin, so much for uh, teaching me about that. And yeah, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.